Good morning, everybody. Well, here we are again. Happy Catter Day Saturday. Everybody is doing good. Um, <laughs> Chunk is a little bit mentally challenged, as usual, but other than that, right, Chunk? Everything is good. Um, Chunk had an upper respiratory. He finished his antibiotic, and he is doing great. Um... And then Gandalf got sick. So then Gandalf was on antibiotic. Now he just finished his this morning. So now that everybody has had a weekly antibiotic, I think everything seems to be okay. Everyone seems to be reasonably healthy. Um, still facing some challenges with Gigi and the litter box. Um, I have a covered litter box coming. That's my last thing is maybe she wants to be in something that's completely covered. So I've got that on the way. Um, it should be delivered tomorrow. Because I couldn't find a nice one in the store. The ones in the stores were all like huge. And she's such a little bitty thing. I didn't want to get her a, uh, a giant litter box that she couldn't even get in and out of yet. So, there's Mr. Alex. Chunk is munching down on leftovers of breakfast while he's taking a break. I uh, got all kinds of toys and games, and their favorite thing to play with is the plastic shield from a litter box. So I'm like, well, okay. You know what? That's fine. As long as you have something that you can entertain yourself when I am not engaged in play. So that's, that's their favorite toy. A little ladybug toy down on the floor. And the plastic watering can. That's the other thing that they enjoy playing with more than anything else. So, um, once again, I apologize for the loud, obnoxious refrigerator. The refrigerator is good, though. It works great. It does its job. So that is Gandalf peeking up on the box there. Hi, Gandalf. And there's Gigi in front of the dishwasher. <laughs> that just knocked him off the box. You have been dethroned, Gandalf. Uh, and Willow, who is consistently pulling the um, towel off of the refrigerator and playing on it. So I have given up. I've put it back about 12 times. And he has repeatedly yanked it back down. So I'm like, okay, you win. I'm tired of this game. So they will play with that. Yes, and Willow is a dude. I got a closer look, and it's, she's a man, baby. That's, <laughs> that's it. So, um, I'm actually really happy about that, because that means that Gigi is the only female I have to worry about. Um, and while everybody will get spayed and neutered, I usually put priority on the females first. Um, and they're also more expensive to do than the boys. So, the good news is I can concentrate on the mamas and Gigi. And then I can do the boys fairly quickly because they're not nearly as expensive or as um, have a long recovery time as the girls. Because the girls, it's a major surgery. Uh, where the boys, it's just snip snip. Right. So the girls take a good seven to eight days to recover from the surgery. And the boys recover in about three. And they're raring to go. That's been my personal experience anyway. Um... And then after that, they are ready for adoption. And I've got a few people that are interested. Um, I'm hesitant on whether or not to part with Chunk. Um, one, because he is my Chunky Monkey. Um, but two, just because he's had so many health problems with the upper respiratories and uh, the issues and the constant, you know, that I would feel bad letting somebody else adopt him, and then if he got sick or if something happened, I would feel bad. You know, like some little kid got all excited that they got a kitten, and then he got sick two weeks later, and it didn't end well. You know, just just because his brothers and sisters had the same issue. So, we're going to try to keep um, Chunk and maybe Willow in the family, since they're from the batch of brothers and sisters that all had a lot of health issues. Um... Gandalf had one respiratory infection, but he seems pretty good now. He's pretty happy. Uh, he just finished his antibiotic. 
This morning was his last dose, actually. And Willow is doing very good. Um, and then Gigi, aside from not wanting to use a litter box, Gigi is doing phenomenal. So uh, we're going to try the covered litter box. She did kind of like the pellets. I tried the pine pellets down there. Um, and she was semi-interested, but still not much. So we're thinking that probably what her, uh, her issue might be is she just wants a spot all to herself. She doesn't want to use anything where everybody else's smells are, you know. And unfortunately, in a small household with ten cats, getting a litter box all to yourself is not possible. Not in the realm of possibility. So I might try to work out something with one of my friends or family members um, to see if I can get Gigi in a different house where there's only maybe one other cat. Um, and then uh, I have a couple of people that have a, a house the size I have and they live alone. So they have like a spare bedroom. So if they can just temporarily have her live in that spare bedroom with her own litter box that nobody else touches and then see if she uses it. And if she does, then we'll know that's the problem. Uh, but it's just right now, there is, uh, there is nothing else I can try. I have tried everything, everything, everything that I can afford anyway. Of course, they have the big fancy litters that are, you know, $75 for a little bag of litter and I'm like um sorry like <laughs> my job is good but it ain't that good I yeah not when you got 10 of them if I had just the one I wouldn't you know be so against spending a ton of money on one thing to see if it helps and uh, but unfortunately when there's 10 that all need food and litter and attention you're kind of limited on how you have to divide up your resources right guys because you guys sure as hell ain't paying the mortgage for me so i gotta do that too and i gotta pay the electric and the water and i gotta clean and i gotta take care of the yard and we gotta put gas in the mower today we have to go down and get gas in the gas can And fortunately, with the help of the guys from work, I was able to fix my mower because my mower stopped working. Bless you. Um, my mower had stopped working. And uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, it's about time for a new mower anyway because I've had that mower about 13 years. And I bought it used back when I first moved into the house. I bought it off of one of my coworkers' husbands for a case of beer. So... <laughs> It was a good price, right? Case of beer for a lawnmower, absolutely. And um, it's a Toro, you know, so it's working really, you know, but it, I think the year, if I remember right, looking on the back, you know, the little sticker that's underneath, it's barely legible, and I think the year was 2003. So it's pretty old, and I figured, well, okay, you know, I guess I've got to um, figure out something, you know, to, to do since it died. And I went to go get um, another mower. And I'm like, well, let me look for something that does the same thing that this thing could do. Um, and one of the least expensive ones I found was like $600. And I'm like, my car payment is not even $600. Like, you people are out of your mind for a lawnmower. It's just a lawnmower. You used to be able to go to the store and get a lawnmower for like $250. Now, 600 bucks now. So I'm like, okay, well, that's out of the realm of possibility temporarily. So, um, luckily I have two coworkers that are phenomenal and they're mechanic, you know, mechanically inclined. Um, and they offered to take a look at it for me. Um, and with a few adjustments and a couple of parts, it was about less, little less than a hundred dollars worth of parts. Um, the mower is alive again. <laughs> it's alive. So, um, my yard is a jungle in the meantime. So now I'm going to have to try to tame it today and bushwhack it if it ever stops raining um, but I think it's finally not going to rain today so we should be pretty good um, but anyway where'd everybody go I was babbling 
and I had them in the screen for entertainment purposes as I babbled, and they disappeared out of screen. You guys are the entertainment, like, you, you gotta stay in the screen. You're the entertainment value, nobody listens to me. <laughs> That's Gandalf and Gigi. But everybody's doing really good. They're pretty much almost all grown up now. I mean, they're still going to be getting bigger. They're only three months. but um, So I've got a plan with my vet also. And um, the plan to take care of the mama cats. Since they're kind of... I wouldn't consider them feral, but they're not tame either. Like, I can't pet Maggie. I can't pick up Maggie. So it's not like I can just put her in a carrier and get her to the vet. That's not an option. So instead, um, we're going to make a plan um, where I'm going to have to set a trap, but I'll get her in a bedroom by herself with treats and um, set the, uh, the trap on a Tuesday night and leave her in there overnight. And hopefully she goes into the trap if I put some tuna fish or something in there. Um, that way she's only in there for a few hours Tuesday night and she would have to have no food and water after a certain point anyway because of the surgery. Um, and then the vet agreed that he would do the uh, checkup and the surgery and everything all in one day. So he'd check her over as long as she doesn't show any signs of kidney problems and heart problems. And as long as she doesn't have any infections, um, they'll go right into surgery from there. That way they kind of, they sedate them a little bit, make them a little loopy so they can handle them. Um, and then they completely do the anesthetic, I guess, or whatever it is they do for surgery. Um, if they have to sedate them, they try to do it first without, just to see if they calm down when they're in a strange environment. Um, but if they start freaking out or getting aggressive, they'll give them a little bit of something to make them kind of loopy and make them chill out a little. So that's the plan. So here in the next week or two, I will be getting one of the mamas fixed and then I'll save up a paycheck or two and then get the other mama fixed. And then, uh, we'll see if Gigi weighs enough and she'll be next on the list. And then we'll make plans for the three boys and then everybody will be spayed and neutered and all set and ready to go to start their new adventure in a new home somewhere. And then I'll see who's going to go where and to whom, if I can find homes. If not, I'm going to be stuck with these little monkeys. Because I'm not going to dump them off in a shelter or something. I can't do that because I don't know what would happen to them, you know. I'm going to wait and make sure that they're going to go to a home that is good. Um, and people that I know will care for them for their whole life. Not just while they're little and cute. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. And that's basically it. So I just wanted to give an update. Everybody's good. You see Sylvester's there. Mama Phoebe's on the back of the couch. Alex is in the window. Chunk and Willow are underneath. Right, Alex? And this is um, one of Gigi's favorite spots now, where she can be queen of the mountain. She likes to sit up there and groom. And Gandalf is... Gandalf is a little bit nuts, but we love Gandalf. Right, honey? Yeah. See, you're you're a kook, but we love you. We just gotta get you to stop biting. That's no good. His, his favorite game lately is attack the feet. So I have many, many scars on my legs. I'm trying to convince him not to. And I had an incident um, earlier this week where somebody had decided to tip over the litter box and smear poop everywhere. And as I was cleaning that out, thought it would be a great idea to play Attack the Feet. It was not a great idea. Uh, and apparently cut me a little deeper than I thought he did on my toe. Um, and then I wound up bleeding all over the place. Which I didn't realize until I happened to be finished with what I was doing there. And then I turned around, looked behind me, and there was blood smears all over the place. And I freaked out because I thought it was one of them. Then I realized it was me. <laughs> so, it was chaos. A complete chaos. <sighs> but we're all good. And the cut healed up with no infection. After many bottles of peroxide. <laughs> no, it was a lot of uh, peroxide and antibiotic ointment. and Keeping it good and clean for three days. Um, 
and then it, it's healing up good. It's not red anymore, so I think I avoided any kind of major infection. Um, and everything else is good, right, Foo-Foo Finny? Is my Finny Foo-Foo? She's my good girl. Except for the mat that you have in your fur behind your ear that you won't let me get rid of. Yeah, because as soon as I touch it, she tries to take my face off, which means it's uncomfortable. Um, so I try to wait till she's sleeping and I go in there and I try to snip at the ends just a little bit. You don't want to cut too close to the skin, obviously, because if they jump, uh, you could really hurt them with the scissors. So. And um, this is also their other favorite thing to do, is that the cardboard box that the food comes in, the kitten food, um, is Chunk's Chunk's place to hang out. Hi, Alex. That's Chunky Monkey's place for for chilling. So, but he's doing great. Um, he actually had one day where his eyes were completely clear, and his face was pure white, and everything was just adorable, and he looked wonderful. Whoops! Come on, Fiv. Focus. Focus. There it goes. Uh, and he looked wonderful. His eyeballs were clear, his face was white and fluffy, and he looked so cute. And it lasted about, I don't know, two hours. I was just thinking to myself, ooh, I should get out the camera, you know, get my phone, and film it so that, you know, people would believe me that he does not always look like he's a mess. Um, and that lasted, you know, like I said, all of two hours. And then when he eats... They play as they're eating, and then somebody will come and jump on his head and dunk his head in the food, and then he's got gravy in his face, and then I try to clean that off, and then he runs around, and then he sticks his head in dusty places, and then he starts sneezing, and then the next thing I know, his eyes are all screwed up again. So I'm like, you know. But I do clean it, I promise. Twice a day, or more, if I'm home. Say, so we clean you. We do. We clean you with saline solution, a little bit of saline solution and warm water to clean around your face and then your eyeballs. We do just warm water because we don't want to get salt water in your eyes. That would suck. Um, and we clean around your nose with saline solution and warm water. Um, and you look wonderful for 10 minutes. And then you just look like hell again. So it is what it is for now. I'm hoping when he gets older, that'll be a little more easily controlled. Especially when you're not, you know, shoving your head in gravy. That, that makes things a little more awkward. But anyway. Okay. Well, I hope everybody has a good day. And everybody has a great weekend. Everybody be safe. Um, and take care. And hopefully uh, everybody gets a chance to have some fun. While we have some nice weather, a little bit of a break of nice weather on the East Coast. Don't know how long it'll last, but we'll see. So, all right, we'll see you guys later. Are you gonna say bye, Alex? Say bye, bye, Alex. Say bye. We'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye, bye.